Hello again, Mark Suderman coming to you from Western Fresno County in a pistachio orchard. And what's been happening out here is a major salt problem. So I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit with you and show you what we're dealing with. Okay, our water quality has become a major issue because all we have to work with are deep wells. And so not only are we not getting good clean water, we also are lacking in volume. And so if you look real close, you can see down here in the soil where the salt line is from all season long's irrigation. And so what we've got out here is we've got gypsum's been applied. And so that's fairly standard practice to apply out in the soil. The only concern I would suggest is that gypsum gets applied many times because people assume that it's calcium. And it's not, it's calcium potential. Remember, it's a compound and it's calcium sulfate. And there's varying concentrations or percentages, more accurately, of gypsum that are mined from the earth. It's taking a soil test to start with and making sure that the base saturation of the cations, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium specifically, are in such proportions that gypsum will actually work. Because if the percentages are wrong, if you're going to apply calcium potential in the form of gypsum, but you may not stimulate any kind of response whatsoever in the soil. Especially when you're looking at these coarse pieces that are going to last a long time. The finer texture material is going to react much more rapidly. But remember, for gypsum to work, there's a couple of major things have to happen. One of them being clean water. Well, we don't have that. It's not an option any longer. Second one being pure gypsum, which is a great concept, but usually growers will apply as good as 97%. But in a case like this one, where it's more of a, a pink color, this is a lesser grade gypsum. So every time you go less than pure, you get less than a response. So it lessens the efficiency. And so you invest good hard earned money but you don't necessarily guarantee you're going to get a result. It'll help you sleep good at night, but is it really going to work out for you for the long-term soil health? The other thing to keep in mind that's a major assumption is the third factor in the uh, whether, whether the gypsum works or not is microbiological activity because you've got to digest it and complex it and make it available in a plant-ready form in the root zone or else it's not going to work either. So there's three major assumptions being made for gypsum to work on a textbook sheet when they make a recommendation and so what I would challenge you to do is look at your soil test first don't paint with a broad brush and don't do what you've always done before if you're dealing with circumstances that aren't what you've ever dealt with because if you didn't end the year the way you want to you probably better not do the same thing you did last year and then expect a different result because that's that's not a good plan so if your soil needs calcium apply calcium there's a lot of good sources out there talk to your certified crop advisor for what your options are and apply those gypsum will not give you the calcium you want if the percentages of calcium in the soil are wrong so just make sure you've got good information to help you make a more informed decision so as to not invest good hard-earned money and not get a growth response if what your soil needs is calcium give your soil calcium Getting a plant ready source is going to do the difference for you, especially if you think in terms of how much may or may not be fixed in the soil. And how else would you know without a soil test? So get that soil test done on an annual basis and you'll be able to better track your progress and what needs to be done and how to prioritize it best. Because with these water quality issues we're dealing with, there's really no easy answers. But if you can get the calcium magnesium ratio right for your soil texture, sodium becomes less of a major issue because all you're then going to be doing is helping condition the water in the root zone and you should be better off. And another thing, keep in mind, growers the world over love to talk about calcium and all the benefits that it brings to their crop, to their soil, uh, generally. But in practice, how many of them are really putting plant-ready sources on to benefit them? And so unless you're given alternatives, probably that's the best you can do. So as a grower, make sure you're getting the best options provided to you by your advisor. If your crop advisor is not providing you that kind of information, you need to find the one that does. And you probably should at the same time find one that does testing for you too, because there's plenty out there that will do that 
and we'll also provide you not just the analysis results, but an interpretive analysis in order to provide a recommendation on how to go about it with a plan of attack. Otherwise, you're going to kind of make your best guess and hope you get it right. And hope's not a plan. And so having that information can make all the difference for you to be successful.